Welcome to everything that you need to know to pass the advanced audit and assurance of the ACCA AAA exam in 2024. My name is Steve, an author for four accounting books and holding Marcus position in two major accountancy bodies. And also I'm the technical writer for ACCA AB magazine. I've been teaching the ACCA AAA for more than 10 years. So in this video, I'm going to show you the things that you need to know to pass this exam easily. Now, of course, here for the global APCs that we do provide the online AAA courses, helping thousands of AAA students pass the exams already. Now, in today's section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking you through, firstly, the pass rate of AAA, not particularly high enough. And there are two versions, the international as well as the UK versions that you can choose from. So in what circumstances that you need to choose the UK version, I will explain that in a second. And there are different other optional papers, uh, the order of the exams, so whether or not we can see the AAA first, where well, the answer is certainly yes. Now, the relationship between the strategic business reporting exam paper, so you need to be aware of that as well, and also the mark allocation of this paper, of course, is a hundred marks, but split into 20 professional and 80 technical marks. And also the exam duration will be 195 minutes. So how we're going to be planning our time, I'll tell you exactly what to do in a second. And also the exam format, the AAA syllabus, the examiner's report from the AAA, our exam strategy of the AAA, the pass exams, so how many pass exams that you need to cover in order to pass this paper easily, the exam technique of the advanced audit and assurance will also be important, and also the AAA examiner's highlight as well. So these are sort of things that we will be covering, okay, in our section there. Now, firstly, let's have a go at the AAA pass rate. As you can see, from December 2022, published by ACCA Global website, up until December 2023 exam, the AAA pass rate is around about 34% in there. And of course, not particularly high because relatively lower than other optional papers. So for example, uh, lower than the Advanced Financial Management or the AFM uh, paper pass rate there. So this means that to pass the AAA exam, you need to have a very good exam technique. Now, before we move any further, yes, there will be two versions of the AAA exam. So there would be the UK version as well as the international version. So which versions that you need to choose from would be depending on whether or not you wish to work in practice, which means setting up your audit firm and signing the audit report. So for example, in the UK, if you want to set up your audit firm and to sign the audit report later on, you will need to apply the PC, which is the practice certificate there. At the same time, you will need to obtain the AQ, which means the audit qualification. Now, if you wish to obtain both, you will have to sit the AAA exam in the UK version, at the same time, the strategic business reporting paper in the UK version as well. However, for those of you who are not wishing to work in practice, so for example, you, you wish to work in industry as the accountant or as the CFO, for example, there'll be no need for you to sit the UK version exam of the AAA as well as the SBO at all, because the AAA as well as the SBO in the UK version, there will be additional syllabus areas building in, okay, in addition to the international or the INT version there. Now, how about other optional papers? We know that the ACCA strategic professional level stage, there will be six exams in total. However, from a student's point of view, we need to pass four exams out of these six. So this means that two papers are compulsory, including strategic business reporting or the SBL exam, and also the strategic business leader or the SBL exam. And then after we pass these two papers, for example, there'll be two other two optional papers that you need to choose from the four. 
So for example, L from the AAA, ATX, which means the Advanced Taxation, Advanced Performance minus more the APM, and also Advanced Financial minus more the AFM exam, you will need to choose two papers out of these four. So make sure that we are ready for that. And of course, if you pass the first paper from the strategic professional level, so for example, you've passed the SBR, you will need to complete all other three papers within seven years. So make sure that you're ready for that. Of course, some of the students' strategy would be to study some of these uh, optional papers as well as the compulsory papers at the strategic professional stage and then to sit the exam when they're best prepared for it. Because if you pass the first one, you will have to sit the remaining three papers within seven years. Okay, so very, very important idea that you need to bear that in mind. However, in terms of the exam order, there will be no strict requirements nowadays. Of course, you can start with the AAA first before the SBI and something like that. However, I will highly recommend my students to sit the, for example, the SBL first, or perhaps in combination with the SBR or the SBR first, before you deal with the optional papers. Because from a marking team's point of view, when we mark the script, of course, the way that markers will mark your ACCA exam script will be quite different uh, for those uh, which are at the optional level or which are at the SBR or the SPL uh, paper level. So make sure that you're ready for that. Now, it is highly recommended that you will pass the SBR paper or the strategic business reporting exam paper first before you dip into the AAA. Or at least you sit these exams all together. The reasons behind it would be in the advanced audit and assurance exam syllabus, there would be 47 audit um, related standards to be tested. For example, the international standards on auditing, which means the ISA. There would be 36 IFRS, which means the international financial reporting standards, including the international accounting standards, which means the IAS to be tested. So, in other words, in the SBI exam, these IFRS have already been tested. Now, if you cover them before, when you come to the AAA paper, you will find things relatively easy for you to tackle with. Otherwise, you will need to start from scratch. Additionally, there will be two ethical documents which means the ACCA Code of Ethics, and also the ISBA Code of Ethics they need to focus on. Of course, the AAA examining team has specifically said that exposure draft related to the international standards on auditing will be tested. However, the extent of these standards to be tested, you can simply refer back to the student's accountant's magazine from the ACCAs directly. So you will not be expected to know more than that from the articles published in the student's accountant from the ACCA. So make sure that you always keep an eye on this when you're preparing for the AAA examination. Now, of course, the good news is that uh, when we are considering the IFRS, there will be lots and lots of requirements in there. And, and of course, I'm the... Uh, author for four accounting books all related to IFRS and also I was invited by ACCA London office to give a public speech about the latest IFRS which is the IFRS number 16 leases back in 2019 so to global students and global ACCA members about the practical insights of them. However when we come to the AAA exam we need to understand that that the IFRS knowledge will not be tested in depth in the AAA paper compared to what we have already seen in the SBR paper before. So that's the good news. So this does not necessarily mean that you can skip
skip some of the IFIs or skip some of the ISA, but we simply look at the same issue from a different perspective. Okay, I will tell you what sort of standards that you need to focus on in a second in the AAA exam preparation. Now, regarding the exam duration, of course, there would be 3 hours and 15 minutes in total. I would highly recommend my students that to spend the first 15 minutes to plan, especially the question 1, which means the section A, in the AAA exam. And of course, you will leave 180 minutes, which means 3 hours, to do the questions, okay, so in the AAA exam. So having said that, the time management technique, using the deadline approach, we simply take 180 minutes in total when we are tackling all the questions in the AAA exam, and divide this into 80 technical marks. So this will leave us 2.25 minutes per mark when we plan the deadline for each of the requirements in turn. I think this time management method actually works and it proved to be working uh, when I teach my AAA students in the past. The reason is, when we see the comment made by the examiner later on of the AAA exam, we tended to find out that a lot of students' answer are not planned enough. So this means that lack of structure and writing too much unnecessary information, so for example the intro and something like that. So make sure that you plan the answer correctly and straight to the point, and that's important there. I've mentioned that there will be 80 take on marks, and of course, there will be 20 professional marks split into 1, 2, 3, and 4, communication skill, analysis evaluation, or we can call it as the A&E skill, professional judgment and professional skepticism, and also commercial acumen skill. Now, the idea behind the professional marks would be this. You need to be able to write the structure of the briefing note in this paper to earn the communication marks. At the same time, you will need to be expected to use the numbers in the case at the same time, particularly calculating materiality level and also using the numbers, for example, calculating ratios, perhaps you are required to perform the analytical procedure for the client's company. So that's important to earn the analysis and evaluation marks. Of course, judgment and skepticism, for example, sometimes may be lied into the risk question, materiality section as well, sometimes may be lied into the acceptance stage or the quality control uh, of the question. So these are quite subjective indeed. And of, of course, the commercial acumen usually exists when you are required to comment on the business risks that the audit client is currently facing. And also you will be expected to explain the implications of accepting the audit engagement for the audit client and also of other issues that depending on the marking scheme. So my advice to you is that always to plan your answer and make sure that each of your paragraph in the AAA exam will not simply include one simple sentence. When I teach my AAA student, I will train primarily on the writing part. So for example, each of your paragraph should include two to three sentences, rather than just simple one. At the same time, I would highly recommend my students not to directly copy and paste the case information into your answer, at least trying to modify it a bit further or to shorten it. The reason is, if your answer is seen as to just to perform the copy and paste exercises from a marker's point of view, the markers may be losing patience when they are reading your answer and directly give you zero marks. 
So make sure that you're ready for that. And of course, the AAA exam would be the computer-based exam. The AAA exam will have four exam sittings in one year. In March sitting, June sitting, September and December sitting. So you sit the AAA exam and then you will receive the result one month after that. And of course, the AAA script will be marked by human beings. So these human beings include examiner and also markers. So make sure that you will please the marker by making sure that the layout of your answer will be quite clear indeed. The exam format of the Advanced Audit and Assurance will include three questions, all compulsory. Split into section A, which means the question one, and then section B, question two plus question three. Section A will be 50 marker question, split into 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks. And all of the professional skills will be tested in the section A question, which means in the question one. However, when we come to the section B, each question will be worth at 25 marks, split into 20 technical marks and five professional marks. Of course, in the section B questions, not all the professional skills will be tested. At the same time, communication professional skills marks will only exist in the section A, which means question one only, rather than in section B questions. And of course, in my AAA course, I will tell you exactly how to score these professional marks in detail because the ways that you can score the professional marks will be quite different when you're facing the question one or when you are facing question two or question three. I also use my standard revision answers to tell you exactly how can you get these easy marks. Now, what sort of areas from the AAA examination that have already been tested or quite frequently to come up in the section A and section B questions. So for example, in the section A question, which means question one, business risk, risk of material misstatement or the ROMM if you like, audit risk will be tested. All the procedures on certain IFRS related issues, for example, uh, the IFRS 16 leases, so for example, for the March 2024, I predicted correctly for the, a lot of IFRS issues that actually came up. Okay, you can check out my YouTube videos uh, in the past. So, uh, all the procedures, make sure that you include how you're going to be performing the audit procedure, what to check and the reasons that you're checking. So three components within each of your procedure will be absolutely key there. And also the audit related areas, so for example, the impact of outsourcing the credit control function okay, to the service organization according to the ISA 402 requirement. So make sure that you're ready for the auditing standard areas that may come up. Sometimes, a few minor ethical issues, so for example the money laundering, may come up in a section A as well. Now, regarding what may come up in the section B in the past, based on the frequency of these topics that have actually come up, for example, the practice management issues such as advertising, such as the tendering acceptance stage, may be tested. And also, in every exam setting, the quality control issues, for example, related to the ISQC number one, and also the ISA 220 quality control for an audit or financial statement will certainly be tested. And of course, I've summarized the common scenarios in my standard answer, so you can directly learn and to 
apply them in the future exams. The ethical related questions tested in the section B, particular or the issues, for example, the group audit, may be tested, of course, in the March 2024 exam sitting of the AAE exam, I predicted correctly the group issue have actually come up. Some of the non-audit engagement services, so for example, checking the PFI and due diligence may be tested. And also the review stage as well as the report stage, so for example, commenting on the subsequent events and all the report implications, these would be uh, the most come up topics in the exam. Now, let's study the AAA syllabus, especially is that you need to know about the main capabilities okay, uh, required by the ACCA. The AAA syllabus has been split from the section A or the syllabus area A up to the syllabus area I. Now let's see each of them in turn. So firstly, syllabus area A talks about the legal and regulatory environment. It's all talking about the audit committee and money laundering issues. Area number B is to demonstrate the abilities to work effectively on an assurance or other service engagement within a professional and ethical framework. So you need to know about, for example, the format of the audit engagement and also the content regarding the engagement for other services and also to design procedures, okay, when you are checking things. Syllabus area C requires you to assess and recommend appropriate quality management policies and procedures in practice management and recognise the auditor's position in relation to the acceptance and retention of professional appointment. So, the syllabus area C usually came up in the question two of the actual exam. Syllabus area D requires you to identify and formulate the work required to meet the objective of audit assignment and apply the ISA. And of course, syllabus area D actually came up, so spreading over all the AAA exam questions. Service area E requires you to evaluate the findings and the results of work performed and draft suitable report on assignment, not limited to the audit report, but also the non-audit services. And of course, usually came up in either question two or question three. Service area F requires you to identify and formulate the work requires to meet the objective of non-audit assignment so for example, the due diligence review, the PFI, which means the prospective financial information review, and also forensic audit and investigation, and also the review of the corporate social responsibility, particularly on the key performance indicators that drafted by the client. Now, syllabus G talks about, so understands the current issues and developments related to the provision of audit related and assurance services. So make sure that you will cover articles from the student's account magazine. Service area number H, apply a range of professional skills. Okay, so split into 10 marks in the question one, five and five marks each in question two and question three as the professional skills marks. Service area I, to demonstrate employability and technology skills. So in other words, you are required to present all of your calculations in the Excel and you can include the narrative in the word processor, okay, when you are sitting the computer-based exam. So make sure that you're ready for that. Now, the AAA examiner's report and technical articles are very key for you to review so you can pass this paper more easily. And of course, you can get access to the examiner's report of the AAA from the AECCA Global website. 
You can even go to the technical articles from there as well. So these include lots of good resources. So for example, the examiner's report will highlight the strengths and weaknesses of the AAA student for each question, for the strength and for the common weaknesses. And according to my experience of teaching this paper, it is highly likely that the weaknesses, which means the weak areas, would come up again in future exams. So make sure to review these articles and reports effectively. Now, in terms of our exam strategy, when we are preparing for the advanced audit and assurance exam, firstly, you will need to have a good summary of the international financial reporting standard. So good knowledge of such area would certainly help you pass this paper more easily. However, I know that most of you are quite busy when you're dealing with the real life work. So it would not be quite sensible indeed for you to review all the bits and pieces of the IFIs. I must say that the AAA examination may have a few variant in each of the exam setting. So for example, when you are sitting the exam in the morning, that may be the variance number one. The variance number one may be tested again in the afternoon, or maybe the variance number two or the variance number three will be ready when you are sitting the afternoon or the evening exam. So this means that to a certain extent, a few IFIs issues could be predicted by studying from the past exam paper of the AAA. So here, I've highlighted eight of the most commonly tested IFIs in the AAA exam. So for example, according to my analysis, based on the last past exam sittings of the AAA, the I is number 16, property plant equipment, you'd have to cover that. The IFI is 15, revenue recognition. IAS 37, provision accounting. IAS 36, impairment of non-current asset. IAS 2, inventories. IFI 16, leases, particularly from the lessee's point of view. IAS 38, intangible asset, particularly for the research and development accounting treatment. IAS 40, investment properties, particularly for the fair value model. And when you're using the work from the expert, you need to know certain factors related to that. And of course, if you cover these areas, I would say that these are the basic IFIs that you may be encountering in each and every exam setting. At the same time, you also need to prepare yourself quite well onto the international standards on auditing or the ISA knowledge. And of course, I must say that there'll be lots and lots of ISAs that you need to cover in this paper. However, according to my experience, that I've mixed the ISA with other ISAs, mixing them all together, you can see, for example, on my screen, you can check out my other videos talking about this. So you will see that each of the ISA, sometimes they are quite similar to each other. I tend to use mnemonics to help students memorize these requirements. Now, of course, if you ask me what would be the very important ISA that I need to cover so I can at least pass this paper, based on my analysis over, for example, the past 10 exam settings of the AAE exam, I would say that ISA 260, communication with those charged with governance, you must cover that. The ISQN number one, related to quality management. The ISA 600, related to the special considerations, audit of group financial statements, including the work of component auditors, you have to cover that. The ISA 720, Auditor's responsibilities related to other information, you have to cover that. ISA 250, 
consideration of laws, regulations, you know, all their financial statements, you must cover it. The ISO 220 quality control for your audit of financial statements, you have to cover that. The ISO 315, identifying and assessing the risks of material misstatement, you have to cover that. So, for example, how to understand the entity. ISO 570, the going concern assessment of a client's company, you have to cover that. So make sure that you're ready. Now, in terms of how long should I prepare for the ACCA AAA examination so that I can pass this paper more easily. Traditionally, if you choose to self-study the paper on your own through the study hub resources introduced by ACCA, according to my experience, that you will need to spend at least nine weeks to cover the whole syllabus, plus another three weeks to revise the questions, especially for the past exam questions from the study hub or the education hub from the ACCA. However, if you study with Global APC, which means study with me for this paper, my plan for you is that I will spend four weeks covering the syllabus phase. It is called tuition phase. I will use my own education book, I write this book, on my own, including all of the summaries, for example, in my map forms for the ISA as well as the IFIs, and also the mnemonics I used in teaching this paper, and two weeks covering the exam questions, but with my standard format, so you can directly learn these templates and to apply in the future exams, so very, very effective indeed. Now, what is your mindset when you are sitting or writing the AAA exam answer? My approach is that always to position yourself as the audit manager or the audit partner, rather than being a student. The reason is that you will be in charge of an audit firm in this paper. So this means that always explain one step further, so for example, the implications of your proposed point, that would be very important there. So the good way of doing that would always to balance risks and rewards when you are considering things. So for example, if you can check the item on your own, there will be no need for you to engage an external expert to do that for you. Alternatively, if you're auditing the client and providing other services, so the client may say that whether or not the audit committee should be set up, whether or not the internal audit function should be outsourced, always care about the pros and cons and benefits and costs of doing that. So if you show these insights in your answer, not only you can get technical marks quite easily, but also you impress the marker a bit further, you will get more professional marks in the end. So making sure that you are ready. I would say that this mindset will always be applied in questions like business risk question, acceptance stage questions, ethical questions, going concern assessment during the review stage of your audit, and also even the audit procedures. Okay, so this mindset will be very, very important to pass the AAA exam easily. Studying the past exams of the AAA will absolutely be vital because you can learn the previous pattern that the examining teams, for example, what words that they tend to use and what verbs that they tend to use and what sort of ISA requirements that they tend to test again and again in the exam. Because at this strategic professional stage that we are training students, of course the ACCA will be training students not from the academic professor's point of view, 
but to train students like the real life audit manager or the audit partner. So this means that we'll not be quite interested in some of the theoretical or other areas which are not practical enough, but we are more interested in those practical areas. So we tend to test these areas more often than others which are not quite practical. So make sure at least you need to study five of the reasons pass exams for the AAA. And of course, to get access to the pass exams of AAA, you can log into the ACCA's practice platform. So the ways that you can do is to go to the ACCA global website and then scroll down the page. On the right hand side in the bottom, click on pass exam paper. And then choose the advanced audit and assurance and then click on the button to log in to the pass exam paper, which means the practice platform. And from there, you can assign the pass exam papers from the AAA and then you can get access to them. So these are quite useful indeed. Now, how about the exam approach? Of course, there will be different exam techniques introduced by different ACCA AAA tutor. However, according to my experience and my high pass rate when I teach the ACCA AAA paper in the past, obviously there's no point in simply include one simple sentence as one point in your answer. So make sure that always quote try your best to quote the requirements from the relevant standard, explaining the implications, and also providing your recommendations of what to do next would really help. Now, my exam technique, I split into three activities. Activity one, as I said before, use the first 15 minutes to plan, especially for the question one, because the question will be quite lengthy, large question indeed. Activity two is to plan the standard answer. So make sure they will not lose the easy marks in relation to the materiality calculation and comments in the question one, which is worth three marks. And also two marks for the conclusion in the question one about the prioritization of the risk and the reasons behind it. So make sure to plan the standard answers. So you can always apply them in your actual AAA exam. And activity three will be to plan the content, okay, related to the AAA. Now, what I would say is that planning the content, as I mentioned before, quote from the relevant standard implication to the audit quality and also recommendations. So you can include at least two out of these in your answer. So, of course, you will find it very, very useful to score quality marks. At the same time, I will highly recommend my students to practice the technique to my own mock exam of the AAA, and we will mark these mock exams with detailed constructive feedback to you. So you will not make the same mistake in the actual exam there. Now, when we are planning the question, because the AAA exam, you need to see this exam under CBE form. So this means that if you click on the exhibit, for example, you can use the highlight function so make sure that you will use different colors for different requirements. Uh, at the same time, you can directly copy and paste the information to the word processor. So usually, you will need to click on, on the exam day, the briefing note. Yes, click on that, which means the word processor. And trying to copy the requirements first, and make sure they notice the word and. 
So within one requirement, if we can see the word and, so this means that there will be sub requirement, okay, inside the single requirement. So make sure they will not miss any sub requirements in this paper. So this will increase the chances of passing this paper easily. At the same time, you will need to be aware of the ACCA AAA examining team's highlight. So this means that, for example, the weaknesses from the examiner's report, so these areas may form into a new question in the upcoming sitting. So make sure they are ready. So for example, I've taken the highlight from the December 2023 examiner's report of uh, AAA for the question one. The examining team commented that some candidates continues to produce very vague answers, so which means that not linking to the question. So they simply write too much vague or intro introductory paragraphs, which are not tailored to the scenario and therefore did not achieve high technical or professional skills marks. I would say the professional skills marks would just to be the subjective marks. You never know how professional skills marks are awarded. And of course, I would say that according to the marking scheme, we can see that how the professional skills marks are awarded, but not the complete 20 professional skills marks, because some of them may be at the discretion of different markers. So make sure that your answer writes less and with higher quality to impress the marker would be very important there. In other comments I've taken from the December 2022, the previous uh, past exam of the AAA. For example, in addition to the professional skills marks described within different sections of the question, three marks are available for communication overall. Okay, so make sure that you understand the format of the briefing note and make sure that you answer all the requirements. That's important there. So these marks are awarded for the use of a report or the briefing note with the introduction, presentation and relevance of the answer and clarity of explanations. So make sure that you use simple and business English without using other metaphors. That's important there. The majority of the candidates achieved maximum marks in this area. Good news. Right there, I hope this section will give you a complete overview of how to pass the AAA exam in a very short period of time. And I wish you the very best of luck to your AAA exam success. I look forward to working with you to tackle and battle and pass this paper easily in my class. Bye for now, best of luck. A, P, C, accounting for your future.